Electricity, it's something we all take for granted. But if we are serious about reducing emissions related to electricity generation, and I believe there's still a debate to be had on this, there are only two reliable alternatives to fossil fuels, nuclear and hydroelectricity. If you live in Quebec, Manitoba, or here in British Columbia, you and I are lucky to have some of the most affordable and reliable energy in the world. In fact, I believe there is no better way to produce clean, reliable electricity than how we do in these provinces. With that in mind, I put together a small series on hydroelectric production here in British Columbia, featuring the past, present, and future of a hydroelectric dams in our province. When it was announced back in April of 2010 that the BC government was reviving the Site C hydroelectric project, it marked the first major hydroelectric project approved in the province since the completion of the Revel Stoke Dam in 1984. That's over 30 years ago now, and that's significant given our province's rich history in hydropower generation. I spent a few days last month up in northeastern BC, home of the Peace River and future home of the Site C Dam. I visited with locals, talked with stakeholders on both sides, and was even given a tour of the construction site and work camp by BC Hydro. And that's where we begin. The near $9 billion hydroelectric dam is currently the largest infrastructure project in the country. And when completed in 2024, it will provide an additional 1,100 megawatts of power to the province. Dave Conway, Community Relations Manager for the Site C Clean Energy Project, was my tour guide for the site. And I spoke to him about the project and its impact both locally and across the province. The Site C project will be a third dam on the Peace River. 83 kilometers down from the Peace Canyon Dam up near Hudson Hope and, an, and about 100 kilometers downstream from the WAC Bennett Dam. So this facility would be about a, a kilometer across, 60 meters high from the river bed. Water would come up 50 meters, would create a reservoir that would be 83 kilometers long in uh, length and on average would double to triple the river width. In some locations like Bear Flat and Halfway River where it's, where it's flatter, uh, that uh, would be substantially wider, four to five times wider. So one of the benefits you get from this project is you get 1,100 megawatts of instantaneous capacity with about 5,100 gigawatt hours of energy over the course of the year, and the, that energy is dependent on your water supply. The benefit is, although the project does have impacts, those impacts are substantially reduced because you don't have to build to store water. That water storage is behind the WAC Bennett Dam. So you've got a facility providing capacity when it comes online in 2024, and energy, the capacity is certainly needed to meet instantaneous load demand, and you're getting that at a relatively low cost to the ratepayer. So upfront capital cost for the project is approximately $8.353 billion. So high upfront capital cost, which is amortized over 70 years, that's the financial range and that's a, a low per megawatt cost of about $58 per megawatt um, hour. The other thing is it makes a contribution as you're constructing and then operating to the provincial economy. So to the, to the local regional GDP, it's about, 100 and, uh, about $160 million to the local GDP and approximately $3.2 billion to the provincial GDP. One of the largest claims I'd heard in my investigation into Site C and talking with local opponents was that this project was simply unnecessary as we do not need the power. I asked Dave specifically about that claim. The project isn't being built for today. The project is being built for long-term energy demand. And so what's occurring, although you can get dips as a result of a downturn in the economy, our experience over 50 years as a utility is, despite those downturns, the load comes back and it starts to exceed where you were previously. So we know based on stats can projection that the population growth for the province is going to be approximately a million people in the next 20 years. And the way things are right now, they'll be using electricity and you have potential economic development with forestry mining and, and potentially uh, LNG. So we're looking at meeting future load demand and our load forecasts show, and we do that on, a, on an ongoing basis, show that in the long term, there's a need for the project over, over uh, the, a length of time. So it's not about today, it's about 20 years from now. Of course, as with any major project going forward, be it pipelines, LNG, or this Site C dam, Aboriginal consultation and partnerships are crucial. 
In particular, a Crown Corporation like BC Hydro does have a serious obligation to ensure they have the support of local First Nations communities. We're looking at trying to ensure as we go forward, we've been out consulting with um, Aboriginal communities. Uh, when we initiated that uh, conversation and, and uh, initiated engagement back in 2007, 2008, we actually started talking to First Nations community from McLeod Lake in the south all the way out to the Alberta Saskatchewan border and then up to the Arctic Ocean. That was narrowed down by the regulators who asked us to fo or told us to focus on 29 First Nations and most of our work has been focused on in and around the project area with Treaty 8 First Nations. So there is a treaty here. We know as a Crown agency we have a duty to consult and potentially accommodate First Nations. So what we're looking at in, in accommodation is it can be a number of things. So there could be dollars, it could be land, it, it's jobs and it's economic uh, benefits and opportunity. We're looking at ways to involve Aboriginal peoples, to involve First Nations communities in the project, working on the project, supplying the project uh, as a supplier, as a contractor. And there's different ways to do that and in some cases they're, they're wholly owned companies, Aboriginal companies, in other cases they're, they're joint ventures. So certainly that's a part of what's going on. There's a lot of economic opportunity with this project. While the project is still in its early stages, it would appear to be the kind of economic injection into a region desperately trying to deal with a downturn in the oil and gas sector. This isn't the first time Northeastern BC has seen economic benefits thanks to investments by BC Hydro. So join me next time as I explore the history of hydropower in BC, going back over 50 years to a time when British Columbia was just beginning to emerge as a modern economy. For the Rebel.media, I'm Christopher Wilson. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update. Want even more of the Rebel? Well, click here to become a premium member.